Progress Report 8, March 23rd. I'm going back to work at the factory. They said it was better I should go back to work, but I can't tell anyone what the operation was for, and I have to come to the hospital for an hour every night after work. They are going to pay me money every month for learning to be smart. I'm glad I'm going back to work because I miss my job and all my friends and all the fun we have there. Dr. Strauss says I should keep writing things down, but I don't have to do it every day, just when I think of something or something special happens. He says don't get discouraged because it takes time and it happens slow. He says it took a long time with Algernon before he got three times smarter than he was before. That's why Algernon beats me all the time because he had that operation too. That makes me feel better. I could probably do the amazed faster than a regular mouse. Maybe someday I'll beat Algernon. Boy, that would be something. So far, Algernon looks like he might be smart permanent. March 25th. I don't have to write progress report on top anymore. Just when I hand it in once a week for Dr. Niemer to read, I just have to put the date on. That saves time. We had a lot of fun at the factory today. Joe Carp said, hey, look where Charlie had his operation. What did they do, Charlie? Put some brains in? I was going to tell him, but I remembered Dr. Strauss said no. Then Frank Riley said, what did you do, Charlie? Forget your key and open your door the hard way? That made me laugh. They're really my friends, and they like me. Sometimes somebody will say, hey, look at Joe or Frank or George. He really pulled a Charlie Gordon. I don't know why they say that, but they always laugh. This morning... Amos Borg, who is the foreman at Donegan's, used my name when he shouted at Ernie, the office boy. Ernie lost a package. He said, Ernie, for God's sake, what are you trying to be, a Charlie Gordon? I don't understand why he said that. I never lost any packages. March 28th. Dr. Strauss came to my room tonight to see why I didn't come in like I was supposed to. I told him, I don't like to race with Algernon anymore. He said, I don't have to for a while, but I should come in. He had a present for me, only it wasn't a present, just for Lend. I thought it was a little television, but it wasn't. He said, I got to turn it on when I go to sleep. I said, you're kidding. Why should I turn it on when I'm going to sleep? Who ever heard of a thing like that? But he said, if I want to get smart, I got to do what he says. I told him I didn't think I was going to get smart, and he put his hand on my shoulder and said, Charlie, you don't know it yet, but you're getting smarter all the time. You won't notice for a while. I think he was just being nice to make me feel good because I don't look any smarter. Oh, yes, I almost forgot. I asked him when I can go back to class at Miss Kinnian's school. He said, I won't go there. He said that soon Miss Kinnian will come to the hospital to start and teach me special. I was mad at her for not coming to see me when I got the operation, but I like her, so maybe we will be friends again. March 29th. That crazy TV kept me up all night. How can I sleep with something yelling crazy things all night in my ears? And the nutty pictures. Wow. I don't know what it says when I'm up, so how am I going to know when I'm sleeping? Dr. Strauss says it's okay. He says my brains are learning when I sleep, and that will help me when Miss Kinnian starts my lessons in the hospital. Only I found out it isn't a hospital, but it's a library. Laboratory. I think it's all crazy. If you can get smart when you're sleeping, why do people go to school? That thing I don't think will work. I used to watch The Late Show and The Late Show on TV all the time, and it never made me smart. Maybe you have to sleep while you watch it. Progress Report 9, April 3rd. Dr. Strauss showed me how to keep the TV turned low so now I can sleep. I don't hear a thing, and I still don't understand what it says. A few times I play it over in the morning to find out what I learned when I was sleeping, and I don't think so. When Miss Kinnian says, maybe it's another language or something, but most times it sounds American. It talks so fast, faster than even Miss Gold, who was my teacher in sixth grade, and I remember she talked so fast I couldn't understand her. I told Dr. Strauss what good is it to get smart in my sleep. 
I want to be smart when I'm awake. He says it's the same thing and I have two minds. There's the subconscious and the conscious. That's how you spell it. And one don't tell the other one what it's doing. They don't even talk to each other. That's why I dream. And boy, have I been having crazy dreams. Wow. Ever since that night TV, the late, 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 late show. I forgot to ask him if it was only me or if everybody had those two minds. I just looked up the word in the dictionary Dr. Strauss gave me. The word is subconscious, adjective, of the nature of mental operations yet not present in consciousness as subconscious conflict of desires. There's more, but I still don't know what it means. This isn't a very good dictionary for dumb people like me. Anyway, the headache is from the party. My friends from the factory, Joe Carp and Frank Riley, invited me to go with them to Muggsy's Saloon for some drinks. I don't like to drink, but they said we will have lots of fun. I had a good time. Joe Carp said I should show the girls how I mop out the toilet in the factory, and he got me a mop. I showed them, and everyone laughed when I told that Mr. Donegan said I was the best janitor he ever had because I like my job and do it good and never come late or miss a day except for my operation. I said, Miss Kinnian always said, Charlie, be proud of your job because you do it good. Everybody laughed and we had a good time and they gave me lots of drinks and Joe said, Charlie is a card when he's potted. I don't know what that means, but everybody likes me and we have fun. I can't wait to be smart like my best friends, Joe Carp and Frank Riley. I don't remember how the party was over, but I think I went out to buy a newspaper and coffee for Joe and Frank, and when I came back, there was no one there. I looked for them all over till late. Then I don't remember so good, but I think I got sleepy or sick. A nice cop brought me back home. That's what my landlady, Mrs. Flynn, says. But I got a headache and a big lump on my head and black and blue all over. I think maybe I fell, but Joe Carp says it was the cop they beat up drunk sometimes. I don't think so. Miss Kinnian says cops are to help people. Anyway, I got a bad headache and I'm sick and hurt all over. I don't think I'll drink anymore. April 6th. I beat Algernon. I didn't even know I beat him until Bert the tester told me. Then the second time I lost because I got so excited, I fell off the chair before I finished. But after that, I beat him eight more times. I must be getting smart to beat a smart mouse like Algernon. But I don't feel smarter. I wanted to race Algernon some more, but Bert said that's enough for one day. They let me hold him for a minute. He's not so bad. He's soft like a ball of cotton. He blinks, and when he opens his eyes, they're black and pink on the edges. I said, can I feed him because I felt bad to beat him and I wanted to be nice and make friends. Bert said, no, Algernon is a very special mouse with an operation like mine and he was the first of all the animals to stay smart so long. He told me Algernon is so smart that every day he has to solve a test to get his food. It's a thing like a lock on a door that changes every time Algernon goes in to eat, so he has to learn something new to get his food. That made me sad because if he couldn't learn, he would be hungry. I don't think it's right to make you pass a test to eat. How would Dr. Niemer like it to have to pass a test every time he wants to eat? I think I'll be friends with Algernon. Tonight after work, Miss Kinnian was at the laboratory. She looked like she was glad to see me, but scared. I told her, don't worry, Miss Kinnian. I'm not smart yet, and she laughed. She said, I have confidence in you, Charlie, the way you struggled so hard to read and write better than all the others. At worst, you will have it for a little while, and you're doing something for science. We are reading a very hard book. I never read such a hard book before. It's called Robinson Crusoe, about a man who gets marooned on a desert island. He's smart and figures out all kinds of things so he can have a house and food and he's a good swimmer. Only, I feel sorry because he's all alone and has no friends, but I think there must be somebody else on the island because there's a picture with his funny umbrella looking at footprints. I hope he gets a friend and not be lonely. Miss Kinnian teaches me to spell better. She says, look at a word and close your eyes and say it over and over until you remember. I have lots of trouble with through, that you say through and enough and tough, that you don't say 
and you and you. You got to say enough and tough. That's how I used to write it before I started to get smart. I'm confused, but Miss Kenyon says there's no reason in spelling. April 14th. Finished Robinson Crusoe. I want to find out more about what happens to him, but Miss Kenyon says that's all there is. Why?